seem to have an extra mic. Lorna, do you need two? You're good with one? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is this working? Yeah. Hello, City Hill. Did we, did we love the worship today? So how are you feeling, Lorna? On a scale of one to five, how nervous are you? Um, probably around a three. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> if you would flip that question and ask me, don't go by the smile, it would be a six for me. Okay, because <laughs> your smile is deceiving. Uh-huh, yeah. mm -hmm. it's just a mask. Okay. <laughs> so tell us more about yourself, Lorna. Where do you come from, uh, family here? Okay, so I moved here in 2006. James moved here 2004. I followed him out to the UAE to date him. So that's a, a big thing, right? Um, we've been here a long time and we've lived in Dubai since then, apart from we spent two years in Kenya, living in a, uh, James was working in a boarding school. So we went, uh, spent two years in a boarding school. Then we came back. Mm -hmm. Love makes us do a lot of things. Uh -huh. yep. Yeah, yeah, good for you. So what do you work as, Lorna? Um, so I am currently a special needs teacher, so I work with children with special educational needs. Um, my background is an occupational therapist, so I worked with, in hospitals, mainly with stroke patients, and then went into working in pediatrics with children. Um, worked as an occupational therapist here for around 15 years, in special needs centers, in mainstream schools, and then when we moved to Kenya, I retrained as a teacher. So then I put the two together, so now I am a special needs teacher, so I can use both worlds. Interesting. You know where I come from, um, I can't say the same for you, but growing up as an Indian kid, and I'm sure a lot of South Asians would identify with this, whether our parents forced us into it or not, you were expected to choose just two professions either become an engineer or a doctor. There's, there's nothing else, there's nothing else. So, you know, uh, even if they did not verbally tell you about it, if you uh, spoke to an aunt or an uncle or a neighbor and they asked you what you, you were planning to do and if your answer was not doctor or engineer, you could hear the sigh of disappointment, you know. You could actually expect them to go back home and pray for you, that you change your mind. So what made you choose this profession? It's, it's very unique yeah, as a college. Yeah, so actually, uh, thanks to my mom. So my mom was working at the time as a secretary for speech and language therapists. And then she later went to be a physiotherapy assistant. Uh, assistant. So her area was in hospitals. Um, and she moved between a few different professions. She also did exercise for the elderly. So she kind of introduced me to the hospital setting. Originally, I wanted to be a nurse but I had a heart condition and I was told I couldn't be a nurse, but that actually wasn't correct. So I started exploring other different options and occupational therapy is so broad. It covers physical health, hospitals, it covers mental health. So people with depression, anxiety, there's so many different fields you can work in um, and you get to be really creative and I'm quite creative. So it was a good choice of all the professions that I looked at. It's incredible how God, you know, makes a way for you and nudges you into your calling, right? Yep. Um, it can be extremely challenging um, in your line of work because you're often dealing with children who might not share or, or work with from the same perspective as yours. And I'm sure the job brings it with itself its own set of frustrations. How do you deal with that? So just to give you a bit of background, the class that I currently um, have, I have six children. We can have maximum eight in a class and four of those have severe autism, two others have learning dis disabilities of different types, and I have an amazing co-teacher, which is my backbone, I couldn't manage without him, um, and we have incredibly unique characters. Every single child is unique anyway, right? All the teachers will tell you that. My children in my class are extra unique. They all come with so many differences. Um, if a child has autism, it can bring challenges to them in all sorts of different ways. They might not be able to communicate verbally, um, they might have problems um, processing things in the environment, so what they feel, what they hear, and all of those things and the, way they different, the different ways that they learn um, can bring very complex different individuals. So I might have a child that comes to school and maybe something happened on the way to school and that's going to throw him off for the rest of the day. So I can plan beautiful lessons 
And within five minutes of the children arriving, the lessons can go out of the window because my kids aren't ready to receive them right now. Um, so the challenges are being flexible. Um, also, just knowing the strength of each child. All the children that come through my door have strengths. I have one that is obsessed with animals. He tells me about animals, and I have to go and Google to check this animal is real, because I've never heard of it, and he's right. <laughs> um, he's very advanced, he, that's his passion. Um, I have another kid who's very good. Children with autism like structure. They like to know what's happening. It gives them security, and if they don't have that, that's when they can often struggle. Um, so they know the schedule really well. They're like, Lorna, it's time for maths, it's time for maths. In five minutes, no, it's maths now. Um, so they're very good at keeping me on task. Um, so I think the challenge is trying to meet all of their needs at the same time. It's very, very hard, but I try my best um, to use their strengths to reach them and to engage them because they don't want to do math. They don't want to do language arts. As much as I try to make the lessons engaging, they would rather do karaoke or PE. Um, so I need to reach them with all the different subjects. So I need to be creative and I need to be flexible. Um, but we're like a little family. We are six kids. We're kind of like two parents with the kids. And that's a huge benefit because you get to know them inside out um, and you know how to reach them. And my co-teacher, like I said, is amazing. He's so patient and he's taught me to be more patient. A lot of the time it's about us lowering our expectations and meeting the children where they are. That's lovely. Do you recall a time when, when it was frustrating for you? Often when we, I mean, I do a desk job, I work in marketing, and um, every day brings with itself some challenges. Sometimes it's a co-worker, sometimes it's the person you're reporting to, sometimes it's a report or a campaign that's not going as well as expected. Do you remember a time that was the most incredibly frustrating for you. How did you, how did you deal with that? What happened? Yeah, I think it's the same sort of things really. It's having the children come in with really big behaviors because something's happened or something's dysregulated their emotions. So for example, a child comes into class and maybe he's had a spring break, he's had two weeks and he doesn't want to be back. He wants to stay at home and watch TV, thank you very much. And now he's here and he has to do some, a little bit of maths. And so what might appear is physical aggression, throwing things, um, trying to pinch. And that's when your emotions, of course, rise high. But this is just that child's way of expressing and saying, I can't cope with this, I'm not ready for this, I don't want to be here right now. So honestly, I would say, and James hears all my stories every single day, that every, every day, it's like a roller coaster. You don't know what's coming. So the challenge is every single day, every single minute, because it could change. Um, and it's about, um, you asked me before, like how God has influenced me in my job, how my, my faith has helped me, and it's really about the fruits of the Spirit. I've tried, to, you know, I talk to people, they say, oh, you must be patient. That's James, I'm not patient. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I've had to learn to be patient, and I see my co-workers that have worked there for longer than me, and they are patient. And it's about developing the fruits of, your, of the Spirit, not just in me, but also developing those characteristics in the kids. They have like mantras, you know, during the day, they go to do something, and they stop, and they look. And I say, I can, and they go, I can be confident. I'm like, yeah. And then they go to do something else. I can, they're like, I can do hard things. So it's about them also developing that personally, and that is what comes from my faith to strengthen them. Beautiful. Can we have a round of applause for that? You gotta share these mantras with me later. Okay. Yeah? <laughs> Um, and just to round this off, Lorna, if there's a kid here who's looking at you, if there's someone who's still not decided what their profession should be, what their calling should be, what would you say um, to someone who's actually considering this profession or thinking about it? What would you say it entails and how would you encourage that person? Um, for me, I think what I have really learned from my profession, not just in the current job I'm in, but when I worked with stroke patients, I worked with amputees, I've worked in a forensic setting with criminals that have mental health problems, I've worked across so many different um, settings, and every setting I've been in, I can only say it's been a privilege to have the job that I'm in, because you are invited into people's lives with the nitty-gritty, 
with the hard stuff, with the, the ugliness that can sometimes come with it, um, you are invited into families' homes, and these families cannot operate like typical families. They can't just go to the shopping mall and go shopping. They can't just go and sit in a restaurant and relax for an hour because it's not working. It doesn't work for them. Um, so I think it's been a privilege to be in the job that I'm in and to be able to get alongside these families, to get alongside the patients. Um, so that is, uh, yeah, that's, that would, I, that I would encourage people, if you want to be in a job that's worthwhile, you go home and you feel that you've made a difference. I don't always feel I've made a difference. <laughs> there are bad days too, but that is the, the joy of the job. Well, you've made a difference for sure. And um, may God bless you and keep inspiring other people through you. Thank you, Lorna. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs>